Hi there, you must be the new hires. I'm Agent Emma from the training department, and I'll be your guide today on your orientation. Let me be the first to welcome you to Lobotomy Corp, where we face our fears to build a better future. Now, there's a lot to go over, but when we're through, I promise you know all the ins and outs of this company, and be ready to face your first day at work tomorrow. So let's begin, shall we? I'm going to give us a little presentation on the basics, and if you have questions, we can go over those at the end. So let's start with the company itself. What exactly is Lobotomy Corporation? Well, Lobotomy Corporation, or L Corp, is a company that produces power for much of the world in special underground facilities like the one you're in currently. We use a patented method of energy extraction and processing, which we'll go over in a moment. At the company, it will be your job to help create this energy by extracting a substance called encephalin from creatures in your care, called abnormalities. Now, I'm sure there are two things on that side that really stood out to you, encephalins and abnormalities. Let's go over what exactly encephalins are and how we get them first before we start covering the abnormalities. Encephalins are a type of brain chemical released by the abnormalities when they are properly cared for. These encephalins are then processed and used to create energy not only for the facility, but also the outside world. This energy is unlike anything created by fossil fuels or other modern methods, meaning it's clean and has no adverse effects on the environment. It's basically the safest form of energy production out there. Alright, now that we're done dealing with encephalins, let's go over the abnormalities themselves. There are lifeblood here at Elcor, and you'll be working with them every single day, so it's important for you to know as much about them as physically possible. So, let's start with the basics. What exactly is an abnormality? As their name suggests, abnormalities are abnormal phenomenon found in our world that can't be explained by conventional means or science. Abnormalities can take many shapes and forms and are given classification via letters and numbers based on the number of criteria but their appearance and origins. Later, they're often given nicknames or common names based on traits and abilities as they are discovered. They can often take the form of monsters, characters from a variety of folklore and mythology, or even unusual machinery or objects. With a facility of our size, I'm sure you can imagine we have quite a lot of abnormalities in our care. In order to keep the facility organized and ease workflow between departments, each abnormality is assigned a code. This code is displayed on the front of every containment unit and transport crate, and is formatted as follows. Letter, number, number. The letter and first number explain the origin and type of abnormality, while the last number is unique to each individual abnormality. Starting with the letters, we have T origin, F origin, and O origin. T signifies a trauma type. These abnormalities take the form of fears or traumatic experiences. F signifies it as a fairy tale type. These abnormalities seem to have ties to various stories passed down through history. O signifies that it is neither of these and is assigned the meaning of original. This is kind of a catch-all category and basically means that the abnormality stands on its own and is neither fear-related nor has any ties to any particular story. Next are the numbers, ranging from 1 to 9 that specify the type. 1 means it is a humanoid in both sentience and appearance. 2 is an animal, 3 means it has religious overtones, 4 is an inanimate object, 5 is a machine or an artifact, something that would be activated, 6 is an amalgamation extraction type, which basically means it's a combination of multiple types, and 7 and 9 are for tool type abnormalities. As an example, Happy Teddy Bear's code is T0406, meaning it is a trauma origin inanimate object type abnormality. In addition to this system, we also have a risk level tag assigned to each abnormality. I know, I know. That sounds scary, right? Every job has risks, you know, and working with the unknown has a few extra ones tossed in. But there's nothing to worry about. We've got top-notch safety and welfare departments, as well as a response team, which I'll go over in a little while once we're done talking about abnormalities. For now, let me explain the risk level tags and move on to some examples of abnormalities of each type and what to keep an eye out for for each one. Alright, at the bottom of the risk levels are Zayn type abnormalities. These abnormalities are by far the safest kind, they're incapable of breach, and often have beneficial effects on the employees who work with them. All of you guys as new employees will be started out working with Zayn level abnormalities, so let's take a look at a few of those. So let's start off with our first Zayn level abnormality. These lovely fellows are also known as F0552 or the opened can of Welchers. This abnormality simply provides a can of soda to all employees who work with it. The soda has a beneficial effect in restoring your energy even after a long day. It also happens to be grape flavored, so that's a bonus for those who like grape soda. They do also happen to be shrimp, but that's not a big deal. Don't worry about that. 
They're just very friendly fellows in big overalls that want nothing more than to give you a free can of delicious grape soda. For our second Zayn level abnormality, we have these lovely creatures right here, F0483 or Fairy Festival. This group of abnormalities have very special protective qualities. After working with this abnormality, they'll follow you out of containment, not technically breaching, and help heal any injuries you might have, no matter how small. Whether it's scalded skin from hot coffee, you stubbed your toe, or you have a paper cut, whatever it is, these delightful little creatures will be more than happy to help. However, there is one slight capitulation. They get terribly anxious if you go near other uh, containment units while the fairies are still working on your injuries, so it's recommended that you simply sit around and wait for them to finish their work before you continue on with yours. Next we have Tath. These abnormalities are capable of breaching containment at times or causing slight injury, but they are easily handled by even new employees, and in fact, Tath are the highest level ones you guys will be working on for quite a while. So, that being said, let's take a look at some Teth level abnormalities next, shall we? Alright, so the first Teth at level abnormality in our docket is this lovely little guy. 0256, or Punishing Bird. Look at him, isn't he just the cutest? He's so sweet. This abnormality often breaches a fly around the facility. He gently packs at employees, flutters around for a little while longer, and then goes back. Basically, the protocol for when Punishing Bird breaches is to just basically ignore him. Or, or take up some bird watching. The only reason he's classified as Tath rather than Zayn is because he is capable of breaching and can do it basically at will. But otherwise, he's entirely harmless and honestly quite a delight. I love watching him fly through the training department. And I know I said he gently packs employees, but I really do mean that. It's very gentle. You can hardly feel it. There's not really a rhyme or reason for who he targets. So if he just packs you, just, you know, ignore it. Go get a band-aid and just get back to whatever it was you were doing before he decided to pay you a visit. Our second test level abnormality is T0909, or Thuresia. This little abnormality is incapable of breaching and can be bound to play a beautiful tune. This cheerful little music box is a delight. Many reports have come in about its soothing properties when played in bursts. However, we do recommend only playing it in 20 second increments, as winding the key too far into Thuresia could end up damaging the mechanisms inside or the key itself. It's a very old, rusty music box and we want to be very, very careful with it. So this is something that we tell every new employee. Don't play it for longer than 20 seconds. I know it's a beautiful song, but we really don't want to risk anything happening to this abnormality. Next, we have Hello Abnormalities. These abnormalities are more dangerous than the Teth class and are capable of breach and more serious injury. But, as long as you follow procedure and leave them to more experienced employees, you'll be fine. Don't worry, you won't be expected to work with high level abnormalities right away. Our first high level abnormality is 0167, also known as Leticia or a wee witch. She's a delightful little witch who seems to have come from quite far away and only wishes to spread joy through her pranks. Her pranks are quite funny, however they can be quite dangerous and quite messy. So it's recommended that if you receive a heart-shaped gift box from her, not to take it into another containment unit. They have a tendency to explode if brought to other containment rooms, which can cause damage not only to the employees, but to the surroundings to and to other abnormalities. If you do receive a gift box, just tell your superior and they'll reassign you to work with Leticia for the rest of the day. The gift box doesn't explode if you return to her containment unit, only to others because she thinks it's funnier that way. Our second head level abnormality is T0541, or All Around Helper. This helpful little fellow is a specialized Roomba, filled to the broom with all sorts of extra attachments. You'd never tell by looking at him since his standard mode is just that small little circle on the ground, but if you use the cleaning mode, be careful, he tends to overdo it and hurt people in the process. He springs out all of his attachments all at once and just kind of flies across the facility one side to another trying to clean up as much as possible. A lot of employees tend to get hurt in a crossfire if they're not careful. So if you hear that he's breaching, I would recommend staying out of the hallways just in case. You wouldn't want to end up with a nasty bruise or worse. All right, so our next level of abnormality to go over today are the wow level abnormalities. These abnormalities are far more dangerous than teth or high level and should be handled with care and caution. They can inflict great injury on careless employees. Though some are actually quite helpful to the facility as well. 
But never fear, only veteran employees will handle these ones. But for the sake of safety, let's look over a couple of them, just so you know what you're dealing with at this danger level. Alright, so our first wild level abnormality today is 00104, or the Magical Girl. She's a justice-chasing young girl possessing great amounts of magical power, and heal those who work with her. It's a little bit like what the Fairy Festival can do, but on a much grander scale, she has far more power than they do. She's also been known to assist during emergencies, reaching containment with her magical powers to help contain rampaging abnormalities and using them on the offense. But these incidents can take a toll on her. If she sees too much blood shed or too many hurt employees, she tends to get a little hysterical. Despite this, though, she's quite a benefit to the facility, having saved numerous lives with both offensive and healing magic. Alright, so our second WoW level abnormality is 007103. Yang. This is a tool type abnormality that radiates a calming aura, helping soothe the frightened employees with its gentle, glowing light. It has a counterpart in Yin, and the two need to be separated at all costs. I cannot stress this enough. Do not wear Yang near Yin. It can get really messy as the two like to combine, regardless if you're wearing one of them or not. Actually, that's something good to mention. Yang is a tool type abnormality, which means you'll actually be carrying it around the facility with you as you do your work rather than just visiting it in its containment unit and actually working with it there. Finally, we have the last class of abnormalities, Aleph. These abnormalities are by far the most dangerous in the facility. There are a few of them, but they can be highly deadly if not treated with the utmost caution and attention. Do not approach Aleph level abnormalities unless you're trained properly for high level work, otherwise it'll be disastrous. I cannot stress enough that these need to be handled with caution, attention, respect, diligence. You cannot mess around with these guys. They are the most dangerous and they can and will kill people if we are not careful with them. Alright, so the first Aleph level abnormality that I'm going to tell you about today is T0131, also known as the Silent Orchestra. This is a highly dangerous abnormality for a number of reasons. Not only is it capable of causing widespread mental damage across departments with its music, it can also drain energy and destroy incafalons, causing massive damage to the facility itself, not just the employees. It's an extremely dangerous abnormality that must be handled with care and is the top priority in any breach if it escapes. Our second ALF today is 00393, Blue Star. There's nothing to fear. Her blue star shall guide us home. If you listen for the sound of a star, it will guide you to salvation. You merely have to open your ears and listen for it. When you do hear that sound, do not be afraid. Jump in towards the center and return to the place that you truly belong. We will meet again as stars. It is as blue star wills it, on the other side of that glowing light a place we will all belong, a place where we will all shine as stars. Alright, now that we're done with the abnormalities, let's talk about work process. At first, you'll be assigned to a department to work in, according to the manager, and this may change infrequently. At the start of every day, you will receive your individual assignments from the head of your department, one of our lovely Sephira. Once you've got your assignments, you'll head to the designated containment room to begin to work. Following individual protocols for each abnormality, you'll provide for their needs, and which in turn will produce encephalon. These encephalons are then collected and processed into power. You will then move on to the next assignment on your list, and so on and so forth. Of course, you'll get lunch breaks, and snack breaks, and bathroom breaks, and all that stuff. But this is just the general workflow process that will happen day to day. Each abnormality responds differently to different approaches, and it's important to keep these in mind while working. We usually refer to these different approaches as work types for ease and clarity. And to help us, I'm going to explain each work type and a couple examples of what that might entail. So let's get started on that, shall we? Instinct work is a work type to satiate physiological needs. It requires physical contact. Works in this category may include the following brushing of hair or fur, feeding of an abnormality, giving an abnormality water, or exercising an abnormality. Insight work. This is a work to improve the abnormality's living conditions. 
Works in this category may include cleaning floors, polishing surfaces, adjusting air or temperatures, checking for messes or stress. Attachment work is a work to satiate social needs. All abnormalities carry desires and a will, and as such, social needs are included. Works in this category may include the following, holding conversations, playing games, hugging, patting, anything you would do with another person or animal. Repression work is a work to restrain existence. While the other works focus on handling desires, this one stifles them. Works in this category may include the following, being strict during conversation, threats, physical violence under specific circumstances, or revoking privileges and decreasing comforts. Now, I'm sure all that talk about having to physically touch or deal with abnormalities so close up has you wondering about safety procedures, right? Well, wonder no more. Our next few slides are going to be all about the various safety protocols and procedures we have here at L Corp to help keep you safe while doing your jobs. Let's start with some protective equipment that every employee will get. Every employee will be given a specialized piece of protective clothing when they're assigned to a department called EGO, or EGO for short. These pieces of equipment have a number of benefits, but the most important part about them is how they can protect against abnormality attacks or even dangerous physiology, such as claws or ooze. These pieces of equipment have varying strengths and are graded Z into ALIF, much like the abnormalities themselves. These pieces of equipment are actually specially designed to handle dealing with the abnormalities due to the fact they are actually extracted from the abnormalities themselves. We use a select amount of the energy produced by each abnormality's encephalons and forge it into protective gear. But we don't just get protective gear from this process, we can also extract weapons. Honestly, I don't really know how either of these processes work. You'd have to ask someone from the extraction team, or their sufferer, Lady Bina, if you want more information on that. All employees, no matter the department, will also undergo training to wield the specialized weaponry. Much like the Ego suits, the weapons are graded from Zayn to Aelith and have a variety of effects and weapon styles. You'll start with very basic riot sticks, but as you grow used to working here, you'll be assigned better and better equipment. Now that we're done talking about protective gear, let's talk about emergencies and breaches. There may be times where abnormalities breach from containment, but this isn't anything to panic about. You'll receive specialized training depending on the department you join, and we'll receive specific protocols to follow in case of a breach. As a primer though, let's go over a few things to keep in mind during abnormality breaches, no matter the department you end up working in. Alright, first of all, the buddy system is your best friend. If you're in a situation that you're not sure you can handle, or you're working with an abnormality that you're unsure of, bring a buddy with you. They may not be able to actually enter the containment unit with you, but they can keep an eye out in the halls and look out for anything strange. Always remember your eco weapons. This is a little self-explanatory, but if you come across a situation, never be afraid to fall back on your protective equipment and your training. Report suspicious incidents to safety or discipline. If you see someone acting like they shouldn't, or you think something is a danger to the facility or the other employees, please report it to safety or discipline immediately so it can be handled. Never do unauthorized work on abnormalities. This is exactly what it says on the tin. We have designated work hours, and we would appreciate it if you didn't work outside of those. There have been plenty of incidents that could have been avoided in the past if employees had stuck to these scheduled hours and not tried to do work outside of them. If you hear an alert over the PA system, it means a major breach has occurred, so please report to the main rooms of your departments or to the breach site as directed by your department leader. If you hear sirens, please evacuate your department immediately, as it means a special protocol has been activated, and I'll go over what that means in just a second here. This special protocol is the Rabbit Team from R Corp. They're a powerful group of mercenaries we bring in for dangerous situations. They can handle any abnormality that gets in their way. But since they're such a powerful force, we lock down the departments we're sent to so no one gets hurt. So when you hear the sirens, that's your cue to get out. Evacuate to the nearest other department and stay there until the sirens have stopped and the department doors have been reopened. Alright, so we're getting to the end of our presentation. Really quick, before the end, I'm going to go over each department and who runs them, just so you can have an idea of the varying kinds of work that we do here. Our first department is the Control Department. This department monitors the employees and abnormalities and plans the best course of action around what they see. They send orders to the other employees while keeping a sharp eye on the camera feeds of the halls and containment rooms. This department is run by Melkut, who's a little scattered but does her best to keep up with it all, always carrying a trusty notebook filled with everything she has to do that day. Our next department is the Information Department. 
This department analyzes the abnormalities, profiles them, and devises solutions to issues the abnormalities may cause based on their data. They are in charge of collecting, analyzing, and archiving observation data and interview logs provided by the welfare team. This department is run by Yesod, who is sharp and cold, but meticulous in all of his work. You can trust him to make sure that everything gets done. Next up is the training department. This department is in charge of composing and regulating company policies and various management procedures. They also run general purpose training programs to help employees adapt well to their new departments. This is run by Hod, who is a total sweetheart who wants us all to succeed. I'm actually from the training department and Hod is my boss and you'll meet her probably tomorrow when we actually start your training. You're going to love her. She's just the best, really, truly. Next up is the safety department. And the safety department gives safety training to all new employees and develops action plans for all kinds of potential emergencies that can occur here in the company. They establish strategies for situations such as escaping abnormalities, panicking employees, and security breaches, as well as setting up safety guidelines for others to follow. This department is run by Nezach, who is laid back and easy to talk to, if a little lazy. He's often dozing off when he should be working. Our next department on this tour is Central Command. The Central Command Department is the control team of the middle layer. The upper and lower halves of Central Command take the role of the foundation for the facility, which allows expansion upwards and downwards. The department also functions as a bridge between the upper and lower layers, making it a valuable strategic location. This is run by the twin Differents, who are spirited and have a strong work ethic. They do look quite young, but trust me, they're not actually children. Much like the rest of the Sephira, they're incredibly advanced AI. Next up is the Welfare Department. The Welfare Department puts preventative measures into action and works on programs that benefit the physical fitness and mental health of employees. In-house welfare is one of the highest values Lobotomy Corporation pursues for the protection of our valuable employees. This department is run by the kind-hearted Hesed, who always has a moment to speak with employees and direct them to his department's coffee machine. It's really good. You should try the coffee. We'll get some later. I'll take you down there. Our last department in the middle layers is the Disciplinary Department. The disciplinary department's top tough team creates rules and upholds them at punishments for infractions such as employee property or acid damage, as well as dealing with dangerous abnormality breaches. This department has the best ability to control and sanction the situation, whether it's an abnormality or an employee causing trouble. Run by Gebra, who is a tough woman with a no-nonsense approach and an excellent eye for trouble. Employees with natural combat and problem-solving abilities are likely to be sorted into disciplinary where you will learn to use more powerful ego than your peers might be able to use. Our first department in the lowest floors is the record department. This department is where all of the information from the other departments comes to be sorted and stored. Everything from abnormality documents, to recordings of experiments, to employee logs and records are stored down here. It's a vast, cavernous place filled with a countless amount of data and a surprising amount of clocks. This department is run by Hakma, a taciturn man who always carries a pocket watch around. He's difficult to speak with, but I'm sure he doesn't mean anyone harm. He's just a little grumpy. I think it's because he's old, but don't tell him I said that. And lastly is the extraction department. The extraction department handles all physical material needed to maintain the company. They play a big role in the upkeep of everything down here by restoring collapsed facilities and extracting ego from the abnormalities. The arrangement, restoration, and extraction of abnormalities are some of the duties that lie with the department as well. Run by Lady Bina, who has a sharp eye and an enigmatic way with words. She's also rather difficult to talk to, but for vastly different reasons than Hakma. She's got a sort of high-class elegance about her that's terrifying in the wrong situations. And of course, all of this is overseen by our head AI, Angela, who assists and directs all departments and by extension, all of us employees too. She's an incredibly smart program and isn't afraid to speak her mind when it comes to managerial matters. You probably won't have a lot of direct interaction with Angela, she usually prefers to speak to the Sephira, but you may see her in the halls or speaking to our bosses. And with that, we're finally at the end of the presentation. I've just got a few more closing words for us and then we can go. I think this was the only thing on your itinerary today, and tomorrow your formal training starts. So without further ado, last few words. First of all, Thank you so much for coming to this presentation. I'm really glad I got to meet all of you, and I was the f one of the first people you probably met here. But yeah, don't forget, tomorrow's when your formal training starts. You can report to the training department bright and early. I'll meet you guys there, and I can show you around a little bit before we get started. 
Well, good luck with your new career at L Corp. And remember, if you want to hear about Blue Star, just come talk to me later. So that was the Lobotomy Corporation panel. I hope you guys really enjoyed this little first date orientation slideshow. I hope it's got you interested in the game, and I hope I've got a pretty neat indie game to light a little more. It really deserves more attention than it's, it's gotten. It's about three years old now, but it recently got retranslated into English. The Bottomy Corporation is an SAP style monster management sim in which you look after strange creatures in an underground facility. It's also got a surprisingly deep story that I didn't want to risk spoiling, so we briefly went over the characters you'll meet throughout the game, Angela and the other Sephira. It is a horror game, though it does have a very cutesy and goofy art style. It is something to keep in mind if you are interested in the game. The game was made by a company out of, a, out of Korea called Project Note. They've also made a sequel called Library of Ruina, which is actually a deck building strategy RPG. Very different genre. Excellent game, though. All of the images, except for the picture of Agent Emma, were official assets from the Lobotomy Corp game and were either ripped from the game directly or found in the wiki lobotomycorporation.fandom.com. The music playing in the background is a track off the Lobotomy Corp OST called No Warning. It's the game's default workday song, it's pretty chill, and I thought it would be a nice backing track for the video. The picture of Agent Emma was made using a Pit Crew doll maker inspired by a logo corp that was made by a Twitter user named 556Chocolate. I also want to thank SwampCon for giving me this chance and letting me put this panel on for all of you. I was really, really excited to put this together for the event, and I hope that I can come back next year and make something bigger and even better. I'm really hoping. This is a little scuffed. I've never done anything like this before in my life. So it was a huge learning experience, but I had a lot of fun with it. So thank you again, SwampCon. And thanks again to all of you for coming, and I hope you have a great rest of the con. Please enjoy your days, evenings, mornings, whatever time it is. I don't know. 